welcome to my first pregnancy vlog for baby number two yes so in this vlog i'm going to catch you guys all up because my last vlog i was so excited i was all over the place i got some dates wrong because i just i just didn't know you know it's all of this entire pregnancy is one big shock okay and um i know i have some new subscribers that i have to update and do not worry i do have a playlist of my first uh ttc journey with before i had vila and so i'm going to link that down below so in your spare time you can catch up and you can see our journey and you know it will explain everything and so for my new subscribers um i want to just give you like a brief synapses of everything that's going on and I want to get right to the point and tell you guys all the stuff that we went through in the past and then come back and it will make everything will pretty much tie in and make sense and I will explain everything that happened uh, thus far so today is July the 11th 2017 and I would like this this video is gonna be pretty much how I got pregnant how I got pregnant naturally after being infertile for three years and getting a diagnosis of um, having uh, both of my fallopian tubes being blocked and I will explain all of that and so for my new subscribers let me just briefly explain uh, my husband and I, we got married in May of 2012. We have been trying since December of 2011 to conceive and we just, nothing ever happened. After we got married, we just kept trying, 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 trying. Nothing ever happened. It didn't dawn on me to go to the doctor or anything. I do have a friend who was experiencing the same um, issues with trying to conceive. And she went to the doctor and she got a test called a hysterosalpingogram. And so she was telling me how uh, about the test. And so what I did, um, my husband and I went to this uh, fertility uh, obstetrician who specializes in helping women you know get pregnant and so we went to see him and got all of our different tests and in order to get the hysterosalpingogram you do need a prescription and so we got a prescription and the purpose of the history the hysterosalpingogram is just an x-ray of the fallopian tubes simple and to the point they insert blue dye into the fallopian tube so that it can uh i guess glow on the the screen the tv screen on the x-ray and it will show if the the blue dye spills out on each side of the of the tubes then your tubes are clear if there is no spillage then your tubes are blocked and so that is what we did so the very first hysterosalpingogram i had we had it i think november 1st of 2013 i do believe and it was the most excruciating thing excruciating procedure we had no i had no uh anesthesia or anything it was so excruciating i was begging him to stop after two minutes the procedure was like 10 minutes long but i couldn't take it because while he was filling up the tube it felt as if um my bladder was going to explode that's exactly what it felt like and the more he would fill up the tube the more he would fill up the tube the more i was just it was excruciating and i was afraid something was going to burst and so i was boohoo crying and he was just like um it's going to be okay i'm going to stop the the procedure but um i promise you you're going to be fine that's what he kept telling me and so i had an appointment after five weeks after the uh six weeks after the the test to discuss the results and when i got to the ob they automatically make you do like a urine test and when i did the urine test the test came up a glaring positive and so i found out that i was five weeks pregnant with viola i found out on december the 11th or 12th something like that 
and yeah, so we were really excited. I had Viola at 36 weeks in two days in July, July 27th of 2014. So she is going to be three years old, 2000, and she's going to be three years old on the 27th of this month. And I have not been on any birth control. I did not take any birth control after I had Viola. When I went to my six week checkup, I was, uh, um, the doctor asked me if I wanted any uh, kind of contraception. I told him um, I didn't know. And he was just like, well, when you know, then let me know and I'll prescribe you some. And I just never went back. And um, we, we weren't really trying, like, well, we was just doing our own thing, you know, and I didn't know if I could get pregnant or not. And we were just, you know, living life, having intercourse uh, regularly like we always do. And um, nothing ever happened. And so fast forward to 2015, I decided that I wanted to uh, get pregnant again. I wanted to be serious about it, so I decided to do the test again. So we went back to the fertility OB to schedule another hysterosalpingogram. And this time it was a different radiologist that was doing the test. And after that test, nothing happened. And so fast forward, to um fast forward to now i started to do some research online as to what can i do to get pregnant naturally and i found this um enzyme it's called sarah peptase and i'm going to show it to you guys give me one second It's called serapeptase. Ooh. This is the brand. I got it from Amazon. It's like 10 bucks, I think, with tax and all of that. But there it is. Serapeptase. And um, you must take this on an empty stomach once a day. Is it once a day? yeah once a day and so I do your research it's an enzyme that's supposed to heal your body of all kinds of toxins it will heal you of any type of scar tissue that you may have and so I thought that it would be perfect and then I read on Baby Center because if you don't know anything about Baby Center Baby Center is like a forum for pregnancy for all kinds of stuff parenting including TTC so if you want to um, if you want to join like a forum they have great forums on TTC and these women take all sorts of really really uh, great enzymes and Chinese teas and all kinds of stuff that have helped a lot of people conceive and so when I heard about that I said well let me just try it to see if it would help me and the first time I was taking it for a few months and I didn't really see anything I stopped taking it and then just recently um, I uh, the last few months I have been taking it consistently and so um, I decided to start to try something else that you know because I have been taking serapeptase for years and nothing happened and another thing that I tried was castor oil packs I really have a, a sneaking suspicion that the castor oil packs uh, aided in this whole miracle um, what a castor oil pack is it's just you get a like a silk sheet and you cut it uh, like the length of your stomach and you soak castor oil you can get this one I got this from the vitamin store this brand of castor oil I got this from the vitamin store and I soaked a uh, sheet in uh, castor oil and um, I put it in the oven. You can put it in the microwave, whichever one you prefer. I put it in the oven 
took it out let it cool do not burn yourself and come back and blame me okay let it cool but it has to be hot and I put the castor oil uh, sheet soaked sheet over my my uh, my stomach area and made sure that it was over where the fallopian tubes are like your pelvic area I made sure it was there and you put a um, a you can get like a a like an they had these like water packs or what I did I didn't get no water pack honey I just put some water in a ziploc bag and I heated it up well not in the ziploc bag I heated the water up first put it in a ziploc bag and then I laid flat on my stomach and I had the the sheets soaked with castor oil and the the hot water uh, hot water uh, Ziploc bag in a bag and put it on my stomach and I laid there for an hour and I did that once a week did it once a week and it's supposed to get rid of all of the different toxins in your body all the toxins all the toxins that's what it's supposed to do now you can look it up and you can you know do your own research you know I try not to tell y'all so much so much so much and then y'all run and do it do your research to see what you know you can do for you okay and so those are the things that I did that is pretty much it and you know exercising and trying to eat right you know that's just pretty much it but I really do believe the serapeptase in conjunction with doing the castor oil packs is what I did to get pregnant that's it that's it alright so fast forward now let me tell you something I really do not know when this happened it did happen in May our anniversary month we did not do anything on our actual anniversary because I was just tired you know we were tired and we just hung out watched movies and ate and all that now fast forward till um, a couple of weeks ago I have been feeling really 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 bad just feeling bad like tired and sluggish and I will feel very nauseous off and on if you guys are new to my channel I am doing I was doing a professional internship for 15 weeks those 15 weeks are over my last day was yesterday and I would do six hours in the office and then because I did it for a hospice agency and so I did six hours in the office and then I would go to a uh, nursing home which had a hospice area and I would volunteer at the nursing home for six hours as well and um, every day we would play like a beach ball catch with some of the residents I would take a beach ball and I would just throw it to each one of them and we would put every time that ball hit the floor and I had to bend over and pick that ball up I felt like I was going to throw up all over everybody and it was just like this really overwhelming feeling to vomit not to mention that you know I'm working in a nursing home and everybody smells just like a daycare center everybody smells like poop or pee and that used to drive me insane and it was hard because a lot of the old people you know with me being chubby I ain't gonna say fat because that's mean but with me being chubby they just love to hug on me and squeeze on me I mean they made me feel so good I had this one guy 93 years old and uh, he would propose to me every single day he said uh, I forget where he's from I think he's from England or somewhere and every time he would see me he was just like yes you're my kind of woman and <laughs> I want to take you to Patty's and marry you and he, he was a little pervert too always trying to touch on somebody and he was just a, uh, I was to hug him every day I'm like hey mr. mr. J I call him mr. J I can't tell you his real name but yeah I was like, hey mr. J he was like I love you so much every time you see me I love you I love you so much and I really enjoyed working there but you know the last couple of weeks have been difficult because the smells have been really 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 bothering me and so so fast forward to last week um, well my church trip I told y'all it was in April it was not in April it was in June last month we had a church trip to go sing for camp meeting and I saw a, a little bit of uh, blood a little bit of blood so I was like okay cool my beard come on all right you know hey you know what I'm saying so I went and I got my <laughs> my uh, menstruation my menstrual cup 
put it in. I we went we got there at what three o'clock in the morning. We left. I had the cup in all day. We didn't get back until like eleven thirty at nighttime, almost twelve o'clock. And um took the cup out and it was like clear fluid. It was like nothing in there. I really thought that I was gonna be like bleeding and everything. And I honestly did not think anything of it. I just took the cup out, washed it, air dried it, packed it back up into this, you know, it can't come with a little bag. I packed it back up and I just kept living my life. And that's just how I was. I did not, <sighs> I guess when you're infertile, when somebody tells you that you can't have, you can't get pregnant, and you just kind of like not give up but just like stop worrying about it you just move on with your life like if it happens it happens and we were already planning saving money planning on getting our IUI you know what I'm saying because I really felt like you know I know my body and I know how sensitive I am and I felt like if I could get pregnant with Viola the IUI can help me out so um we went we did go to a facility we did go to a facility and lady looked at all and that was my fault i brought all my paperwork and all my stuff and she was just like no you know you need to do ivf you're you're not going to get pregnant and i'm not going to do it i'm not going to do because i don't want you to it to fail and then you come back and blame me that's what was her her thing she didn't want to be i guess held liable or be blamed for me not getting pregnant if the procedure didn't work and she knew my on paper it says that you know you have bilateral uh with two blogging or whatever the terminology was and so she was just like you got to do IVF here's my friend we don't have ten to fifteen thousand dollars okay so we were just like you know what we'll go somewhere else and in the meantime you know Violet's birthday was coming up we had a lot of things my husband's birthday was coming up we had a lot of things going on and plus I was working you know at my internship and doing all of that and just busy and I had joined the choir and so I was not really thinking about anything so fast forward to last week uh, Tuesday I was eating lunch in the office to Monday and my friend was just like the one of the girls that she's at the school she's at the same school that I am and she helps me uh, we both intern at the same office and when she was done with her work she would come in and she would help me with some of my work and she was just like what's wrong with you and I was like I just don't feel good I really do not feel good and then I woke up and my breasts were like excruciatingly painful like they still hurt I mean they don't hurt like when I take off my bra it's like like that gnawing pain it, it really hurts so anyway um i was just like yeah my breast hurt everything she's like are you sure you're not pregnant i said i don't know i really do not know i said i don't know she's like well when was your last period and i was like i really do not know <laughs> and i did not know in the last i just don't i didn't i was not keeping track like I was keeping track because I was keeping track but then you know you just give up like you know it ain't whatever I kind of got down about it and I was like you know I don't know when it's gonna happen so I'm not even gonna like worry about keeping track no more or whatever and so I just stopped keeping track so I can't tell you my exact the last day of my exact period I don't know so anyway she was just like well when do you find out I said well I'm gonna take a test this weekend and then that night I was just like really like down in the dumps like I was sick I just didn't feel well my breast was hurting and my husband was just you're pregnant you're pregnant I know you're pregnant I know you're pregnant when you get paid when I get paid on Friday you go to Walmart and you go get you a pregnancy test and make sure you get two so you know we can take all the tests and find out because I want to know I want to know and every single day of the week he kept hounding me like I know you're pregnant I know you're pregnant I know you're pregnant I said I don't know if I'm pregnant and I don't want to get my hopes up high and I was like really hoping that the symptoms would get worse because they were really like off and on you know what I'm saying they weren't really that bad but they were they were bad enough for me to notice but they weren't like you know where I couldn't function so Friday when my husband got home um, I went to uh, Walmart and I got the pregnancy test 
and I got the cheapest test of course I got the clear blue and it had the plus sign and then it had a digital test that said pregnant or not pregnant so I said okay cool and when I got home he was like you want to take the test now I said hell nah I'm scared and I was real scared because you know you just don't want to see that negative test and I've had my share of negative tests okay and I just didn't want to see it I didn't want to deal with it I just I was like you're supposed to do it on your first morning urine you know trying to you know buy myself some time so I get up for the last few weeks I've been getting up at four o'clock in the morning to pee that's just been my thing like I just pop up it don't matter what time I go to bed I pop up at 4 a.m. and um, I went and I got a Vila's cup because I had to pee so bad I got one of Vila's little cuppy cups and um, I peed in the cup Cause I don't do that that urine stream business because you may miss and all that and I ain't got time for that so I always pee in a cup and dip the stick for five seconds into the cup and when the urine was going you know how it how it just um, you could see it going through the window I mean it did the plus sign bloop bloop that plus sign came up so quick I was just like my heart literally I was not breathing like my heart stopped and I had the plus sign in my head I said oh my god I'm pregnant I'm pregnant and I was just like hyperventilated I can't believe it I'm pregnant I woke my husband I said hey I'm pregnant he was like what I said I'm pregnant I'm pregnant I'm pregnant he said oh my god what really let me see take the next one <laughs> so I went in the bathroom and I took the second one and it immediately they had the blinking lights and it one blink one light one uh bar two bar three bar and it said pregnant and I was like oh my god I'm pregnant and I immediately started crying because I was like oh my god three years and the first thing my husband said was whoo sure saved me a lot of money I ain't gotta pay that money for the damn procedure that's the first thing he said he was like good thank you Jesus hallelujah <laughs> <laughs> he was so happy. I think he was more happy not having to spend eleven, twelve hundred dollars on the IUI. You know, because I was just like, I don't want the regular IUI. I want the medicated cycle. You know, with the fertility drugs to make sure that thing, you know, go through. I'd have probably ended up with multiple. You know, and I, ain't, I ain't ready for that. I'm not one of these people. I hell, I want twins. And hell, no. Nah, I know how hard it is to have a baby. Babies are a lot of work, and trying to juggle two child, please, it's a lot of work. I, whatever the Lord gave me I would have been you know happy with it but I don't wish twins on myself because kids are a lot of work and it gets it never gets easier it just gets harder as they get older but we we sure want we want four and I told y'all we want four kids and that's it four is enough and that's it and so anyway I don't even know why. so then I just had to tell somebody so when when um so I went and I called my mom and I, my dad answered the phone I was like can I talk to mom and he went and he got my mom, my mom was sleeping. And I was like, mom, mom, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant. I just took a pregnancy test. I took two pregnancy tests and I'm pregnant. She was just like, oh my God, when did you find out? I said, just now. She's like, oh my God. <laughs> she said, I'm so happy to praise the Lord. That's how she always say that, praise the Lord. And so she was really happy. I didn't tell my dad because he doesn't care. He doesn't. Like, he, he he will care once he see, you know, my big belly and all that. When the baby's born, he'll be really excited. But right now, he's just like, okay, yeah, cool. You know, all right. You know, and so, yeah. So, after all of that, then, you know, of course, I text my family, let them know. And um, I know a lot of people don't uh, agree with telling your, your family um, early for your pregnancy and all that but I didn't even know how far along I was I felt like I was a, very far along because of how fast the test came up positive and so um, so we just went on that day I went to go get a little sign for my car and uh, more batteries and that's when I um, made the video t you know announcing telling y'all so then here comes Sunday. Sunday, you know, I was gonna, my mom had Viola, so I was gonna, you know, run some errands and go to the, uh, the store and get some fruit and stuff because I really wasn't feeling anything cooked. I just wanted something easy that I can just wash up like real quick and eat like, you know, grapes. I bought some cantaloupe and watermelon and bananas and I've been eating bananas like it was going out of style. And so, um, so I decided to do some errands 
and when I went into the store you know I always say whenever I go anywhere I always pee first because I've been peeing like my life was over with y'all saw in my last vlog uh, where my husband and I went to the movies I was literally peeing like it was just going out of style so um and I had no idea had no idea I was pregnant so when I got to the Publix uh, oh yeah and I wanted a chicken tender sub so good and so um, I went to the bathroom and when I was wiping I saw a little bit of light pink I was just like oh hell no don't do this to me and so I said well let me just go to the emergency room the emergency room was literally like around the corner from the um, around the corner from the public so I said well it shouldn't take that long you know so I went to the to the emergency room and they got this little kiosk where you can type in you know they real fancy now honey they got this little kiosk where you can sign in instead of having to go to the front desk and tell the people you know what you there for whatever you go to the kiosk and you type it in your name your date of birth and um, why you're at the hospital and so the man I put in you know pregnancy spotting and so when the lady was just like they always want to know how far along you are I said and I just said like six weeks because that's what I just assumed I assumed it was six weeks and I was at least six weeks and so um, they rushed me in and the nurse was really really nice and she uh, the nurse was super nice and she was just like well we're gonna take your blood and check your HCG levels I think she said HCG HCG levels to see how far along you were and she had this chart so it took like an hour for the results to come back and when she gave me the numbers she the numbers uh, whatever number it was um, on her chart it said that I was between six to eight weeks pregnant and so I was like oh yes I was so excited like that's confirmation right there I am pregnant you know because you can take a pregnancy test all day long but the truth is in your blood honey and then she was just like the the doctor ordered a a ultrasound I had a transvaginal ultrasound and the ultrasound that goes on top of the stomach not on the stomach because she did it like under my um my belly by my um in my pelvis that lady knew what the hell she was doing okay she knew what she was doing she was a young 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 uh young lady um she knew what she was doing honey because i was kind of self-conscious because you know my stomach kind of big and i was like i hope she i hope we see anything because you know six weeks is you know six to eight weeks is kind of early you know i wonder if we could see we'll be able to see anything and so i went up to the um ultrasound room laid down on the, the table and she had me um take off my bottoms of course and i had to lay on this this thing that elevates your butt and so she first did the ultrasound under my my belly by the pelvis area and i saw a little beanie with the heartbeat going boop 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 <laughs> i was just like hey little buddy and it was a, you it was you could see it it was so cool it was really cute and i've never seen i think i saw viola for the first time at 10 weeks at the emergency room they did a bedside ultrasound and I did see Viola for the first time at, at 10 weeks but yes and then we did a I was afraid of the trans and I couldn't deny it because I I don't know I had my opinions of trans vaginal ultrasounds because people say they cause miscarriages and all that other stuff but the way she did it was really really gentle it was a thin little pole type thing and she let me insert it she let me insert it and when I inserted it she was super gentle she and most women are not gentle like I don't pref I prefer male OBs over female OBs because the male OBs are very very gentle when it comes to pelvic exam well in my experience I don't know about y'all okay and so because I remember my doctor was out and I had to see this female OB and she was just like <laughs> and I was just like hey lady you doing too much <laughs> she was like oh I'm sorry I was just like well calm down you got a vagina too like Jesus Christ <laughs> she was just ramming on me I was like good lord and so um, 
sorry y'all and so yeah so the trans badge you know she put it in there and it was kind of uncomfortable because I, I kept having to pee and so you know as she was going on inside I was like oh I hope I don't pee on this lady's stuff and then I saw the baby again and he he or she was just laying there and you just see the heart she said do you see the heart and of course I had to ask do you can you tell I let her do her thing because she had to take pictures do her measurements you know for the doctor and everything and um I was just like uh can can you tell me how exactly how far along oh she said absolutely you are seven weeks and four days pregnant and that was on July the 9th and that's the reason why I know how far along I am because I went to the ER so still in the story makes sense so you know just in case y'all be like you didn't see, you haven't gone to your first appointment yet like how do you know exactly how far along you are and that's the reason why they went to the ER and so um she's like yeah you're seven weeks and four days pregnant and your due date is February 21st I was just like oh both of my parents are gonna be so overjoyed because my mom's birthday is February 1st and my dad's birthday is February 14th and so I knew they would be really really excited and I was so relieved seeing little peanut in there with the heart beating and I was just like you've been in there this whole time and mommy didn't even know hey she was laughing at me because I was talking to her like where did you come from <laughs> also and so uh yeah and so uh you know after all of that i had the doctor gave me a prescription for some um prenatal vitamins with iron i didn't get the prescription yet i've been taking show y'all these are sorry these are the prenatals that I've been taking their gummies because I just can't deal with trying to swallow anything right now. So yeah, these are gummies. Vitafusion prenatal vitamins. This is like 15 bucks. It's expensive. So yeah, if you want to try to get it, get it at uh, Walmart, not CVS like my dumb butt did because it's too much. And so, and another thing, I guess, if this makes sense, but this is extremely TMI. And so, but this is a channel for TT Singh. So, you know, if anybody else is watching that shouldn't be watching, then don't be in the comments talking about, you know what I'm saying? And all that stuff. I'm just letting y'all know what I did. Y'all want to know what I did. So this is what I did. After we would have intercourse, I would just lay there all night. I would lay there all night. I would not get up. I would lay there for at least I'll say like five hours four or five hours because I would have to get up eventually because you really do have to pee or you will get a UTI a urinary tract infection and so but after we would have intercourse I would take a dry towel a dry washcloth and I will put it um I'll put it in my vagina so that nothing escapes and I would just lay flat on my stomach and I would sleep just like that. No take a shower, no wash off, no nothing. And I would sleep like that all night. And I think by me doing that, it allowed the swimmers to marinate and go where they needed to go. But I really do, because I had been taking Serapeptase for a long time, but I, so I honestly think that it was the castor oil packs. I don't know. I can't tell you. I'm just telling y'all what I did and those are the things that I did. And so yeah, so that is that is pretty much it. So today um I am 7 weeks and 6 days. And so tomorrow I'll be 7 weeks and 10 and 7 10. I'll be 7 weeks and 7 days, which I guess my week switch over on Wednesday or Thursday. So tomorrow since it'll be the seventh day i guess that's a new day i don't know i don't know how it works but anyway i'll be eight weeks on thursday <laughs> every thursday i'll be another week my weeks change over on thursday so i'll be another week on on every thursday and so yeah this is what i did if you have any questions comments leave them down in the comments below if you want to remain anonymous and you just want to be private you can feel free to e uh to email me just give me some time to answer i will answer y'all know i am not weird okay i will answer your emails just give me some time i will answer your emails and i answer all questions and so that's just pretty much it that's all i can tell you you know do your research oh i did drink this chinese tea um 
I'll insert a picture. Boop! There you go. <laughs> I'll insert a picture somewhere of the Chinese tea that um that I was drinking. I didn't drink it for very long because I just gave up the ghost. I just was like, oh, forget it. You know, I drank it for a while and and then I just threw it out. And so yeah, so I, I will I will link every single thing that I use. I will put in the description bar. I'm just gonna be put. I'm gonna put everything in the description bar. So please read the description bar. I will link all of my old TTC videos for my new subscribers. I will link, not link, but I will put down all of the things that I use: the castor oil, um, how to make castor oil packs, the tea that I drank, the serapeptase, and all of that. And yeah that's just pretty much it and so that's it y'all I can't tell y'all nothing else that's all I did and so thank you Jesus cuz man and I was pr I've been praying every single day thanking God cuz let me tell you fertility treatments are expensive man and I just you know I said Lord if I ever come into some money I really want to give someone that gift to get that done if they can't figure out a way to, to get pregnant on their own and we are we are eternally eternally grateful I mean my husband's been working seven days a week you know what I'm saying just to make sure that you know we can you know make enough money and save up and all of that he's been really really great and um yeah and my mother-in-law and my mom have been tag team helping me with Viola so you know when I first found out after all of the dust cleared part of me was just like looking at Viola like my baby you know how am I gonna love another one you know and I just felt like instantly guilty like you know and I took her to Walmart and I bought her like a little toy phone and you know I just don't want her to feel left out or feel you know slighted in any way she doesn't understand I told her I said Viola mommy has a baby in her belly and she was looking at me like okay you have a belly baby I was like yeah <laughs> She don't know, but we you know as I get bigger when I get really big then she'll Figure it out and then when the baby comes out she'll she'll really get it because we're gonna have a baby That's not gonna go home. So that's gonna be a big change for her But my my goal don't worry. I am really really gonna ask a lot of you mothers who have uh, more than one child like how do you um, How do you incorporate the new sibling into the family where there's no jealousy so all of that stuff is going to be coming up well i will be asking for your advice and trying to get some insight on that and you know that's just pretty much it i'm at the, at the wash house so I'm gonna get back to washing but I just wanted to do um, a quick video on all the things that I did to get pregnant after three years of infertility and I was asking my husband I was just like am I fixed am I fixed you know part of me was kind of nervous and scared because I don't want to have this baby and then I'll be all right and and I'm just thinking okay I got another three-year gap and I pop up pregnant after two or three months like ain't nobody got time for that they have kids back to back like that i would say thank you jesus hallelujah but that's what scares me i want to know if i'm fixed like i don't know am i okay now like what is it like can i conceive naturally you know with subsequent kids like will it be easy for me the third and fourth time like i really don't know that's a big question mark that i have and so that's something that I'll just have to talk to my doctor and see what he says. I mean, he can only guess. He don't know. But anyway, yeah, that's just, that's just, you know, that's just pretty much it. Y'all excited? Yeah, I'm excited too. So, yeah. So, you know, every week I will be doing a pregnancy update. And I'm still, you know, dealing with the insurance company, y'all. Got to go do it again. Calling them, trying to, because they, you know, maternity, the maternity side is a maternity side. It's never all on the same damn insurance. And so I have to, you know, get approved. And then you only have 30 days to confirm the pregnancy in writing. And you have to send the documentation of your confirmed pregnancy to the insurance company so that they could approve you for, ugh, it's just a lot of pain in the ass. So I've been talking on the phone all week long trying to get approved and they can't approve me for a whole week so i probably won't be seeing my ob until next week and i will be almost nine weeks 
nine weeks pregnant by the time and if I can't get an appointment because he's super my OB is very 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 popular and he's he's very busy so hopefully the summertime is is a little slow for him and he has um openings and so because i don't want to go to nobody else i really really like dr s and so yeah so anyways i'm gonna leave y'all and i'll see y'all next week all right so don't forget if y'all have any questions comments or concerns